Hi. So this conversation is with a YouTuber person that I have admired for a long time. Noor. Her channel is called Bark Noor Z. I always, even though I'm American, I always say Bark Noor Z in my head. That's weird. I don't know why. But anyway, hi. Hi, Katie. Uh, thank you so much for having me here on this little interview thing. I'm really excited to hop on and answer questions and all sorts of things. <laughs> Why am I like this? Dude, I relate so hard to that sentiment. Even I'm ram at this point, I'm just rambling and I'm not, I'm just making your editing harder at this point i'm so sorry i love editing these things so i want to say to you and anyone else who wants to participate in this project with me don't worry be yourself it's fun so let's let's just jump in where are you from originally and if you're not living there where are you currently residing do you like my fancy hand motions So I actually come from Jordan, uh, that's in the Middle East, right next to Syria and Palestine. But currently I live in Germany. I'm on this sort of exchange uh, year over here. The first semester I um, was like just a regular exchange student at university. But then in the second semester I actually did an internship, which I recently finished. And right now I'm just sort of enjoying my holiday. That is so cool. And I've really enjoyed your videos about your life in Germany. I just love your editing style. But um, anyway, w can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Uh, yes. Uh, so basically, uh, my name is Noor. I'm sure you know that already. Wait, never mind. Basically, I've been making videos since I was about maybe 11, 12 years old. And I, at first, I just sort of made them for my family to watch. That was sort of a bit of a bit of... I remember my very first video ever was like a birthday gift to my friend um, and I put it on a CD. I somehow learned how to burn it into a CD and that was her birthday gift. That was like the start of me making videos on Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> so yeah, I did these bunch of videos and then uh, I found out that you can upload stuff on YouTube and I started doing that and from then on I made a bunch of embarrassing things. And until now, I do a bunch of embarrassing things, and um, I also like write uh, sometimes um, uh, for short films and that kind of thing. Um, I I do like to call myself a filmmaker, um, even though I'm like I'm not great at the technical stuff. I don't really know how to use the big cameras and all that, but I, I like to I still like to call myself a filmmaker <laughs> in the sense that I I like to tell stories stories in the sense that i like to tell stories um and put the visual aspect into that that sounded smart i'm proud of myself for making that sound smart <laughs> uh yeah that's me that's, that's who i am i i i yeah is there anything else i like um i like cornflakes and i I like blueberry donuts, the ones from Donut uh, Factory. I don't know if you have that where you live. They don't have it here in Germany. They just have Dunkin' Donuts, which is okay. It, I don't know, man. Donuts here tastes almost like healthy, which is disappointing because donuts where I come from, they like, mmm, like you know, they taste really unhealthy. They're just mmm. I do remember this about Germany. They don't know what sweet tastes like. It's true. Everything that they call like dessert could be qualify as like a main dish in America. <laughs> I do not know this donut company of which you speak. I am intrigued. I'm of the intriguedness. Don't mind me. I'm just eating my lunch while I'm getting ready to go to work soon. <laughs> You've been on, on Patreon for a little bit. I wondered how your experience with it was and how you came up with the name Potatron for your patrons. 
<laughs> also, sorry I'm not really involved much over there, but I always enjoy your videos. Patreon is actually really like user friendly. Like it's it's really easy to use, um, and they have blog articles that explain everything. Not just like how to use the the technical things, like what button to turn on type of thing, but also like how to grow and ideas from other creators that did certain things um, and like they give you these ideas on how to grow and they're always like sending emails um, like updating you on stuff they're very transparent i really like that about them but they're transparent about like every step every change that happens within the website and i think that's important because it's like they're giving you as much uh, freedom with how to control your own Patreon as possible and I think that's really cool and actually the CEO of Patreon has his own YouTube channel where he uh, like gives advice for creators and his advice is just so valuable and it's like the kind of thing that no one ever talks about his channel is called Jack Conte Extras if you're interested in seeing that I find that his his words are all really like wise it's like it's almost like i feel i don't deserve to listen to everything he says for free because that's how you know <laughs> and as for the potatron i honestly have no idea i i have i completely i don't remember but i i can imagine that maybe i was just like i don't know making fun of it or Maybe I was just trying to pronounce it, and I went like, uh, potatron, okay, yeah, we're gonna call it that. That's not how I sound, by the way, obviously. I don't know. <laughs> I'm very proud to be your very first potatron, and if you want to see a really funny video, you should just pay the dollar be it play be it be a potatron, pay a dollar a, a month, and the welcome video that you get when you do that is like worth it because it's so fun. So anyway, your your editing style. Wow, how long does it take you to make a video? Ah, uh, it actually takes me forever. <laughs> I mean, it's different every time, it's different for every video, and it also depends if like I'm busy with school or work or something else. Um, but I would say maybe it would, like the very minimum uh, would be two weeks, that's the minimum that it would take me to edit. And the maximum, it could go up to like a month or two if I let myself overdo it. Wow, that's that's a long time. Is that like editing for a month straight like two hours every night or is that like editing when you get a burst of inspiration or when you absolutely feel like creating um only when i feel inspired which is actually it, it made posting consistently on youtube very difficult because when you only work when you're inspired you end up just like stretching out the amount of time that you could be uh, doing something um, I was gonna say productive, but I hate the word productive, so then I, I just, I got stuck in there. Because, I mean, obviously if you only really work when you're inspired, then you're not working all the time, which makes being consistent a whole lot more difficult. Except that recently I actually uh, tried something new, which has been really, really helpful for me. Uh, I tried, like, allowing myself to work on more than one video at a time. So basically I edit two or three maybe videos at the same time and when I'm like not feeling inspired for one thing I can just work on the other thing and by the time like I'm bored of this I just go back to that. And this has been really really useful in making the entire process just quicker because then this time that I have when I'm not inspired to work on this, I can use to work on that. And therefore my time is more used, if that makes any sense. And sometimes it's wrong to let yourself just overdo it. You kind of need to learn how to know when to stop because if you don't, then you're just nitpicking these tiny little details that no one's ever gonna notice. As an editor, is there something, some, some quirk that other editors do that bothers you? 
that like, oh, stop doing that. Like maybe the hand transition to bounce, bounce to the next place or something like that. I'm interested to hear what are your editing <laughs> things. Um, and something that people do in editing that annoys me, I really, I don't like it. I don't like it when, um, like someone has this, like let's say, let's say this is a video of me and I'm talking about something, and then uh, I bring in some B-roll of like really nice footage, and usually it's very beautiful footage, don't get me wrong, usually it's like this really nice cinematic uh, footage of trees and nature and, and the planet Earth, or, or like their city or something. Uh, so yeah, they're talking and then there's really nice footage, but then the footage has nothing to do with what they're talking about, it's just like visual it's like they this it's like they just throw anything visual in there because they they know what else to put in there. That annoys me. That annoys me so much. It's like you know, either you just don't put anything in there or you find something that's you're remotely kind of tiny bit related to what you're talking about. I don't want to I don't want to see trees even though they're very pretty, but I don't want to see them. <laughs> Moving on. No, I hear you. That is a valid point. Yes. So, nice, light, easy peasy question. What is your dream life? That's kind of that's kind of a really hard question. Um, I mean, on one hand, I could say that how I'm living right now is kind of the dream life for me because I'm really happy and content with how things are. I'm happy with the roof over my head, the kind of freedom I have. I'm happy with uh, what university I'm in, the friends I have. They love me, I love them. Um, and the kind of videos that I'm able to produce for YouTube. So like I'm content with all of that. And that's almost like the dream life. But I do kind of understand that the question means like, in the future for like much bigger goals and dreams. Um, I guess it would be like having what I have right now, almost, but maybe in a slightly bigger sense. So like, I would like to be able to be working on a film, a film that I wrote, whether that's a short film or a feature film. But of course, um, it being a feature film would be like the even higher level. Um, so I, I would say like right now I'm living this minuscule, is that the right word, minuscule version of my dream life and it has the potential to evolve but I am still content with how it is right now and I am, I mean I'm fine, I mean it's not like, I'm not, I wouldn't be completely fine if it stayed this way forever, I would like it to evolve because that's naturally how we are as humans, we don't like things to stay the same forever. But if it, it was it was kind of like this with these cornerstones kind of filled um, and then it was just evolving, then that would be perfect for me. Did I, did I even make any sense? <laughs> yeah, you totally made sense. Next question. So of these videos that you've made in this time in Germany, which one has been your favorite and why? Okay, well, the favorite one that I made, uh, my, fa <laughs> my favorite one is the one where I talked about what it was like being an exchange student in Germany. I sort of like summarized my entire semester in this one video, and I think it's called Being an Exchange Student in Germany. And I just love that video because, um, like, at some point I got kind of bored of working on it, and then I came up with this new idea to, like, show my laptop screen in like parts and click on folders it, it's it doesn't make sense right now but it does in in the video i think uh, but basically just that like tiny new idea made me excited to work on it once more and then i was like super excited to work on it and i'm really like happy with the finished product i find that i often really like videos that i make that are like a conclusion or a summary of a happening, if that makes sense. And I like also watching other people's videos of that, like some like thing happened, like the semester passed or a year or something, and they sort of put that together and, and concluded it, if that makes any sense. 
Okay, my last question for you before we get into your questions for me. What is something that just always makes you laugh and can you like quote it or describe it or something? Uh, okay. There is this one video that is so hilarious to me. I think it's a TikTok, but I sort of just got it somewhere from my friends on on uh, like chats. Uh, I don't know if you can show this video because I think it, it, it has definitely has some copyrighted music, but it's basically like uh, a water bottle and oh, so some backstory in Germany or I think maybe in most European countries, you can like uh, collect all your uh, leftover water bottles, the plastic ones, and then you can, and also gl glass ones, and then you can go back to like the supermarket or some place and you put them in this machine which uh, takes them away and recycles them. And so this video, it basically had one water bottle um, standing in front and um, it has the music by Adele which is like, uh, never mind I find someone like you. But except that it wasn't just the song, it was like, I think the live version, so <laughs> I feel so stupid explaining this. So basically, when she says, never mind, I'll find, it's her singing, but then when it's like, someone like you, it's like the whole audience is singing with them, so it's like, someone like you. And then the, <laughs> this sounds so stupid, but you need to see that video. Maybe it can be linked in the description. I don't know or maybe you can you don't care about copyright and you can show it I can send it to you <laughs> it, It's stupid. It's stupid, but it's like I, I love it. I love it I, I'm, I don't I don't even like TikTok, but this is this is a gem. This is like it's a I think this is a masterpiece of our time like you know how there's the Mona Lisa This is the masterpiece of our time Okay, now I'm gonna ask you some questions. Um, okay, so this is a bit of a weird question, but I noticed the logo you have on your channel. It's like an upside down triangle with these two ovals in them. It kind of looks like an alien's face, or actually I'm not sure, but I'm really curious to know, like, what was your thought process behind making that logo and how does it, like, sort of relate to you and what you do on your channel? So, I don't know if you've ever watched any of my videos to the end, but here we go. Nostrils of death. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah, I, I see it. How do you feel about your YouTube channel at the moment? Is it like, are you satisfied with it? Is there like a new direction you'd like to take it? I often find myself like every now and then feeling really discontent with my content and I start thinking about like changing lanes or something, but then I just go back to my, my head and like, shut up, no, you're doing well. <laughs> um, so like, what, how, how, how do you feel towards your channel at the moment? Is there somewhere in particular you'd like to take it? Um, what goals do you have in mind? I, I do like where it is right now. I like that I can do very easy edit vlogs just talking from my heart and I have a few people who care enough to watch and interact with and I think that's really cool and I, I love doing these conversation slash interview videos. It's so cool when, you know, I'm collabing with someone who's got that beautiful community tab and can help share it and like I've got these videos that have hundreds of views and that never happens. So it's just like doing this kind of videos helps me to actually make the make real more real connections like I'm, I'm it feels so surreal to be editing your footage like this is so cool like I'm editing somebody that I'm a fan of <laughs> so having an excuse to have these conversations with people is just amazing as I'm asked this question more and more in these conversations I guess I start to get I guess the picture starts to become a bit more clear or depending on the day how my, how my ambitious and ooh, I'm feeling but you know what I have a feeling that there's a hundred thousand people out there that 
would love this. I think so. And then I'll be able to... I don't know. Then, 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 then the, the, the confidence starts to wane. Next question. And what, what's your favorite video that you made recently or like throughout the past year and why? Hmm. Now I've got to go back and look. Let me see. For me, I don't really even look back on old videos that often. I make them and then I immediately just move on from them. So I, I, I'm just like looking through, scrolling through because I, I've uploaded a lot of videos in the last year, but I wanted it to highlight two for different reasons. One video that was called Poetry, Forestry, and Attempting to Win Some Money. I put so much work into that, but it was fun. Um, we were cutting some firewood, and my, my husband's dad is a farmer, so there's this big blade attached to uh, the back of the tractor, so we were cutting it ourselves, and I just set up the, my little tripod a million different times and just let it record for a few minutes in a bunch of different places and edited it all together to make it really dynamic and I put really epic music in the background and I just loved it. I loved everything about it. I was so proud of it. I was proud that it actually told a story too, that it wasn't just cool clips of forestry, but there was something happening I, I put so much into that. It didn't it didn't perform that well by, by my standards. And I was just like maybe my title stunked. I don't know. And the other other favorite video of mine because of the reaction I got from it was Have you ever been frustrated about gender roles? And I talked about my background and I got really really personal and almost confessional and the, the reactions I got from people in the comments and one person in real life even like came up to me where I work at this restaurant and was like that that was really special and thank you for that and I hugged him and like I was just so like can I hug you I don't I don't remember how it came about came about but it was so real and real life internet life meeting real life was just so profound what compelled you to start YouTube in the first place? Was it like you were watching a bunch of YouTubers and you got inspired? Or were you more like the type of person who already filmed like home videos and then you thought, eh, why not upload uh, some stuff on YouTube? Or like, what is it? I'm curious. Hey, I like this question. So yes, it did start. The first initial motivation was wanting a creative expression, feeling kind of lonely and wanting to connect these things together. But the creator that actually inspired me to start is this um, person named Colleen Ballinger, who's the alter ego of Miranda Sings. No, wait, Miranda Sings is the alter ego of Colleen. <laughs> I watched her for so many years. I just stumbled across her one time, the Miranda character, and I was like, this is so stupid. And then when I saw that it was a joke, I was like, this is so hilarious. I saw her vlogs, and I was like, I could do this. Like, this doesn't even look that hard. I, I would be cool to be able to collect my memories and connect with people. Thank you so much for doing this video with me. Thank you for sharing the laughter and the fun. And yes, goodbye. See you next time. Goodbye. <laughs> I sounded like the Teletubbies. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you crack me up. I'm so, so glad to get to do this with you. So anyway, hugs to you and to anyone watching this. And be sure to check out Noor's channel and Nostrils of Death. Let me know if you didn't know that's what the logo was. And let me know if you did know. Never mind that.